Hello everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror List video. On today's episode, we are going to be discussing our least favorite cards from the starter decks. A few weeks ago we talked about our favorite cards, so now we're going to be a bit negative for 15 to 20 minutes. So let's dive right in and start with none other than Bryn for the Nathaniel Cho deck. Yeah, I've got Relentless here. You might be, if you watched our previous video about starter deck cards, you might be thinking, but Bryn, this was also your favorite. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're right. It is. We call that the uh, old classic Bryn paradox. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I, I enjoy being challenged by cards to try and make them work. Uh, it's the part of most card games that I enjoy. The most, anyway. The most. Playing is just getting to test and see if your theory worked. Mm -hmm. uh, but this card is also, like, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, there's there's a couple of weird places you could make it work, but, wh but why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the payoff doesn't... It's not even that great. Like, you get an emergency cash, pretty much. If you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, this one's, this one's just, like, uh, this one's just sad. Yeah. It's, uh, that's all this one is. As you can see, it is also my personal least favorite card from the starter decks for Nathaniel Cho because I look at this card and the only thing I think is, oh, okay. And then I just walk away and go read a book or something. It doesn't like excite me. And I, I just like, I look at this card and I'm like, they wanted to solve the Asphaloth. They like they they there's the Asphaloth conundrum where enemies have three health, so you have to use two attacks to kill it. But then they thought, why don't we give the fighters something a little bit of a a little bit of a boon for them doing that? And it's just so slow. It's so impossibly slow, and you can't rely on it. It's just there to like take up spot, space in your deck, and then you're like, I guess I'll commit this for one fist, and then like be like, what have I done with my life? Nothing. You know, if I could play this in the Tony Morgan deck that I am currently playing, I would think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do a lot more damage than I need to. But can't you just like still just but... run your Faustian bargains and just get five Oh, resources? yeah, yeah, like... no, like I can also just cheat because I'm playing green, so. Yeah. Like that's the thing, there's just so many better ways of doing what this card does. Like, even investments, which I don't like, is better than this, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, maybe if you didn't have to exhaust it so you could, like, step into a room and beat the crap out of a bunch of rats and acolytes and stuff. You have to exhaust it? Yeah, yeah, you can only, you can only do it once a turn. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the... <laughs> All right, wow. Travis, what do you got? <laughs> Uh, I pick self-destructive partially because the viewers don't need three people to tell them the relentless is bad. Um, but also, I really don't like how uh, situational this, how swingy this weakness is for yeah. basic weakness. Uh, we're obviously like, it's pretty fine as a basic weakness in the Thanel Cho where it comes to play. And like, if you're playing a fighter, you know, it's, it's a fine card because you have to weigh whether the two actions to get, you want to get rid of it at some point. But it's not like so crippling that you can't just power through it for an attack or two. Mm -hmm. um, but for a lot of other investigators, it's like just blank. Yeah, I've like you just high rolled your weakness. I've personally like when we were in our Forgotten Age uh, return to, I have personally I had this for my Mandy Thompson, and I rerolled mm -hmm. it. And I'm gonna have like a little rule with myself that if I get this with my Clover, I'm just gonna reroll it because there's no fun in just oh, having. That's it's, exactly what I was going to say. I, I just, I wouldn't take it. i just take something else. Yeah. I think the only yeah. other thing I also, like, re-roll for my weaknesses are this one and the one that, uh, from Forgotten Age, that kills you when you draw it three times. That's the only other, other one that I would be like. Yeah. Those are the only ones that I would, like, re-roll dependent on what was happening, right? Because Yeah, like, I might re-roll depending on what kind of investor I was playing. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was, like, I'm playing Big Hand Harvey, and then I get that one, I'm like, well... I mean, it makes my deck just, like, the deck that I want to play not function, so... Yeah. Yeah, or, like, yeah. Patrice, if, like... If I was playing, like, an Investigator where I could, like, play around it a little bit, and it's, like, actually, I'm not guaranteed to die from it, like, I'd probably stick with it. Yeah, as long as you have counterplay, right? Like, that's... Uh, yeah, like, I don't blame you for not wanting to play with it, but... Yeah. Yeah, that one, I, I usually present myself with the option of, like, do I want to take over Zealous instead of this? 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's the that's the rule. Uh, if you if you don't want that one, you get overzealous <laughs> instead. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I I technically play that with like all of my weaknesses. Where if I really don't want the weakness, I can take overzealous instead because it's the worst one. I I dig it. I dig but, it. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, that's the only one I usually pick. Yeah, the way I've been doing weaknesses for the uh, when I've been playing with my family is I offer them three and I let them remove one from the pool and then give them one of the other two at random. Nice. I thought you were so just going to say... if there is something I, absolutely crippling, you can get rid of it. I thought you were going to say, I just but. give them all a copy of Overzealous. <laughs> 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 all right, let's go Harvey move on to so uh, cool. our boy Harvey Walters. Brand, why don't you start us off? I got the Necronomicon, Petrus Dedeus, Dedesha <laughs> translation. I have no idea who thought this was okay. Uh, like, everything about this card is vaguely broken. Uh, some of the things about this card are like actually just broken, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Isn't this the fastest tabooed card? Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. even get a chance to play with it before it cost eight XP instead of five. I played with it once. It was worth five uh, XP. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I bet it's worth eight. Oh yeah, me too. This is just like, because as you guys can see, obviously, I have also the Necronomicon. This is like, I yellow is my second most played class, but I play it because it's fun to feel powerful. And this is like, um, just the over the top nature of yellow card design. Like, there is so much going on here that's like gross. And you have to wonder, like, why? Right? Like, it has five books because, as Travis once said, just ask the graphic designer how many we can put on, right? <laughs> how many can we put on here before it looks bad? It only costs three. Like, that's really good for the, what it does. And it doesn't, like, Relentless has to exhaust. But, and I know, like, that's <laughs> yeah. comparing, like, a Ferrari to a guy who goes around, like, he hops to work on one foot right? Like, just because it's fun compared to Necronomicon <laughs> to Relentless. But it's like, this card just, it's so pushed. And like, I don't think I don't think in Arkham Horror the card game player cards need to be pushed. I think they need to be synergistic, fun and promote exciting deck building opportunities. And this card just doesn't do any of those things. Because it's just... This card's synergistic if you have well prepared you can get plus five to your book test <laughs> that is true yeah, like the synergies for this card are actually kind of what makes it a little bit broken where so it comes to play with six secrets and it's like yeah you can draw six cards with it or you can get plus skill value to six year or the five year yeah six year tests or you can discover two clues or you can deal like three damage to an enemy and then like draw two cards or whatever mm -hmm. what it's really broken is no, I can do it all immediately, but then, like, this pack also includes, like, a library dose that lets you just pick up a book. Mm -hmm. It's, like, all the ways that there are to recycle it. Yeah, and I, but the, the, the thing to me, like, when I'm talking about synergy, I don't mean, like, just, like, like that kind of... Like, because this card's already, like, it's just busted even on its own, right? Like, it's... Strong. Yeah, no, if it exhausts it, I think it'd be okay, but... I, I agree with that as well. Like, if you could do one of these a turn... Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just like play it, do all this stuff, and then pick it up, and then do it again, and then, or like that one book spell that put like a book in play for one turn, and then just do it, and pick the book back up. Yeah, yeah. Or <sighs> even if they cost like an action instead of a lightning bolt, but yeah. you didn't have to exhaust it. Yeah. Like and some then, some sort of gate on not just being able to run it out, being like I spent all the secrets, let's go. Yeah. Travis, what do you got? Uh, once again, I selected something different. So that we didn't have the same card three times in a row. And also I've talked about the Necronomicon's design in a myriad of other videos. But um, I don't like Thrice Damn Curiosity because it punishes me for having lots of cards in my hands. Mm -hmm. I remember it was it. very strange as well also that like... Because like you can play around it pretty easily like when you build your deck for it. But at the same mm -hmm. time like this card can like... It kind of just, like, it was weird that, like, this came as the design for his weakness. Like, I suppose it makes sense for Harvey Walters, right? But it's still kind of... Yeah, like, like, it's like, it feels like they knew that the archetype was was incredibly strong. Yeah. Because that's why, like, curiosity doesn't feel like something that would deal you heart damage. Like, it would deal you mental damage, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Like, stumbling on something that scares you. But, like, 
all the seekers have a big pile of sanity. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. It's like they print all these cards to make the archetype good, and then kind of gutted the investigator who was supposed to use them. Yeah. But then all these really good cards, you can still just play in other investigators. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. It's just a weird choice. It is. All right, let's go on to Winnie. Bran, take it away. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what I have to say about this is <laughs> she is not a mechanic. She is a tailor. They yeah. are two completely different jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I got. That's what I got. Um, She's here to fix my clothes. She's not here to fix my plane because I don't have a plane because that's not a card type that exists in the game yet. Like, mine is jumping off. I I, I think none of the cards, like, uh, really, like, bothered me too much in the Winifred deck, but Leather Jacket was my choice just because, like, could they have maybe just, like, made a motorcycle instead? <laughs> like... Just so then Lonnie Ritter would flavorfully make sense. Because, like, I'm with Travis. Like, I imagine what he's going to talk about. And he could correct me if I'm wrong. But just because, like, I know he doesn't think this card's that good. Right? Like, um, the soak isn't that exciting. And it's obviously there as a companion piece for Lonnie Ritter. You're probably only playing this if Lonnie Ritter's in your deck. So it's kind of like a brain-dead deck building. Where, like, I got Lonnie. That means she needs something to fix. The only thing she can fix right now is a leather jacket. Right? So, like, why couldn't they have just, like, maybe just made a motorcycle for Lonnie to fix? And then there would have been that flavor resonance. Yeah, like, you have to balance it a bit. But, I mean, like, even if it was, like, just, like, something to do with movement. But it was, like, even if it was just, like, a little less pushed, right? If it was a little on the weaker side. But it's still, like, maybe, like, had three, like, like two health still. But, like, Lonnie could fix it. And you just, like, could use it for a bit. And then after that, it was just something she could fix to soak. But at the same time, like... Um, like, do you, like, hide behind a motorcycle for it to be the damage? Like, I can see the kind of the weird thing they're in, but I mean, like, I, <clears throat> why didn't they just make a motorcycle? It would have... Uh, uh, Justin, the motorcycle takes damage when you use it. Okay, and Lonnie yeah. puts it back together. And it, it couldn't take damage, it doesn't uh, take damage for you? Yeah, but it, like, maybe, maybe uh, it can't be assigned damage that would be dealt to your investigator or something like but that. But it has strain because... <laughs> <laughs> it, can, it can be too stressed out to drive. It's like, I don't want to drive yeah. today. I don't want to do it. Uh, Travis, what do you not like about oh, yeah, Leather like, Jacket? Pretty much what you covered, Justin. It's just, it's such an obvious include. They're, it's like they pranked Lonnie and they're like, oh, this could be cool. And then someone was like, yeah, there's no cards that this works with. And they're like, oh. Yeah, yeah there was someone's like, oh, but there's leather coat. The and then someone says, I got it. And then they just write on the board, Leather Jacket. And everyone's like, yes! Leather Jacket, take the evade off, cut the cost by one, boom. Yep. Yeah. Like, no, it's I, just, it's, it's a boring card. I don't, it, it's boring design. Like, it's there, obviously, to fill, like, Lonnie's niche. It's just, it's lazy. Yeah. I yeah. think with uh, uh, future Lonnie will be more exciting when she has a motorcycle to fix. Um, maybe yeah, the other thing I hate about jacket is this card's, can... like, so this card's not actually good, and once they print something better for Lonnie to, like, Yeah, you'll fix, never play Leather Jacket. You know, I can play this card. Yeah. It's just garbage. Yeah. Um, maybe, like, because I've not even looked at the horror in high gear. Maybe Lonnie can fix the motorcycles in that one or the cars in that one. Uh, who knows? Um, but it's just, yeah. Once there's something better, Lonnie will have the piece that actually, like, you know. But it's like, flavorfully, Lonnie is sick. I love the, her design. Lonnie is sick. But just, she's lacking that flavored companion. Because right now she's just using a wrench to like fix your jacket and you're like thanks Lonnie and she's like no problem don't All right. worry I got you jacket yeah the thing fine? I do like about the leather jackets though is uh the design headspace that they lead into like this is very clearly a color shifted leather coat yep and uh like right away here we're getting a blue a blue holy rosary it's actually just the holy rosary but blue yeah uh, I like I like the idea of that like what would this card too. How would it be different if it were a different color? Yeah. Honestly, in that case, I wish they just, like, you know, like... Because, like, um, even though, like... Because like, the Blue Holy Rosary is so sick. I've been, I've been playing with it. Um, and it's just really fun. 
and color shifting cards to other colors is sick. I just wish they were like able to just like have this still just be leather coat, right? Just yeah. different, right? Uh, Cause why can't they? Yeah, this is this is just like sort of a proto shifted. Yeah, because like, you're still before, like before they were just like, why couldn't we just do that? Because like you're still in like the like the deck building restrictions where you can only list by um, uh, card name, right? So you couldn't mm -hmm. put four leather coats in, right? So, all right, let's go to Jacqueline Fine. Bryn, take it away. So I got Ineffable Truth level five. I hate this card because it is binder fodder that I have to put in my binder because I don't have other copies of it. But, like, why the hell would I ever pay 5 XP for this? Mm -hmm. Like, riddle me that. Two this again. is possibly the worst evade option <laughs> that purple gets. Yeah, yeah, but, like, also, you just sometimes it costs 5, because, you yeah, know, why would it? Why wouldn't it? Yeah. You could just play Mists of Rella. All right, Brent, so here's your deck that you get to play next time. You're going to play this Ineffable Truth card in a Dexter deck with that new pistol that just got spoiled, so you can evade a guy with your brain, <laughs> deal two damage to him, and then shoot him again for two damage. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, man. Brent's like, can, we, can I call an audible and change my card? <laughs> <laughs> no, I still hate it. Mm -hmm. Um... Miley's favorite. So I don't think Azure Flame's a bad card. Obviously it isn't. But um, I've recently had like an epiphany where like I I don't actually end up reading a lot of purple cards because they just bore me out of my freaking gourd. Like they're just all the same card. And it I'm just sick of it. Right. Like as soon as I see the text, this attack uses brain instead of I stop reading. Right. Because like I understand I understand that's the mystic thing, but I'm like just so bored of it. If I see it on another color, like a recently spoiled guardian card, I'm like, oh, this is cool, let's go. But like, I understand the balance is here and the balance is interesting where like now it's, you can like focus on the damage and it's the positive tokens instead of the symbol tokens, yada, yada, yada. But like, I'm still just so bored of that. And it just makes me go cross-eyed. I'm like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Dude, is this Travis? What's your card? Uh, it's Nihilism. This is here for the same reason that, uh, well, for similar reasons that uh, self destructive is. This one's like better because you will draw the botanical token. And. But, like, if you're not playing a purple investigator, like, even if you are playing a purple investigator, if you're not playing Jacqueline Fine, the odds that you're going to be. Uh, canceling or ignoring the tentacle token enough to be make this threatening are pretty non-existent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, it's one of those cards that just like it's a weakness that kind of does nothing. Yeah, I get it. I'm with you. I don't know what you're talking about. This one does like minimum three to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like, man. Person area. You know you're an outlier. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> All right, let's go on to Stella. Bryn, take it away. I got the Cherished Keepsake level one. Um, I wanted to be clear that in no way, shape, or form do I hate Mr. Potterson. He is the best. <laughs> um, but when this card was spoiled, I was so excited for all of, like, a second and a half. Where I was like, upgraded Mr. Potterson. I can upgrade the Mr. Potterson in my Yorick deck. And then I read the card. Yeah. And I was like, this is garbage. I can't play this out of my discard pile. <laughs> Why would I ever want this? Yeah. Betrayed by your best yeah. friend. Yeah. It's, it's just, uh, it was just sad. Yeah. Uh, do I think it's good? Probably. Yeah. I mean, Am I like, going to play with it? No. Yeah, in the exile deck, it's pro. I mean, it's the best bang for your buck you'll ever get. Oh man, yeah. For the sanity soak, right? But you can't recur it, so you're stuck you with just recur. plain old basic last year's model of Cherish Keepsake. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, mine is Grit Your Teeth, and I chose this one because I forgot it existed. Uh, it's cute, and that's about it. I don't have much more to say. I just... I wa Okay, so I actually have more to say, but it's about Travis's card, so I'm going to wait for that. Um, <laughs> uh, I just... Yeah, no thanks. Travis? Uh, yeah, so this is Oops. Um, it's here because it's a bad card and they put it in the pack, so now I have four copies of it instead of four copies of a card I want more of, like Lucky. <laughs> I didn't need four copies of Oops. I barely needed two. Yeah. <laughs> but I could have used more copies of Lucky, and they were just like, nah, or resourceful. They're like, nah. You have oops instead. Yeah, there was a lot of reprints in the Stella deck. Like, a lot of reprints. And, unfortunately, oops is one of them. I didn't choose oops because I was like, while I was choosing, I was like, I'm not going to choose uh, the reprints. But if I chose a reprint, it, pro it, it would have been oops easily. Dang. All right. Yeah, just don't want it. Don't want it. Well, those were our... Least favorite cards from the starter decks? Of course, you know, like, one thing stayed as well, who's anyone's like, man, you guys are pretty negative about this game. Like, we do we do this because we love this game. We have, like, there's a lot of things we like, but sometimes, you know, you gotta complain about the things you love, right? It's just, it's like balance. It's just like balance. Uh, we're gonna be back next Thursday for another exciting list video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, have a good one, and as always, GG's.